Hey, Bobby. Look at you sitting like a little man. Mwah. guys how you going welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video I finally popped and this is the outcome oh you want to look up at mommy oh you want to look up at mommy <laughs> oh my gosh that was the cutest smile probably wind but I'll take it so guys it's been a while <laughs> Benjamin is now a month old. So far out, it has been a roller coaster. The reason why it's taken me so long to film this video is because we just had a really crazy start to parenthood. Yeah, so before I get into my birth story and everything that happened, um, Ben, when he was born, was actually a special care baby. So um, I'll get into that more in this video, but he was a big boy. And with big babies, they usually have um, like low blood sugars when they're born. And yeah, Ben's was a little bit more serious. His pancreas ended up producing too much insulin. So um, he had to be taken to the NCCU or the NICU, whatever you want to call it. I don't really know the difference between the two, but yeah, special care nursery he had to go to at the hospital. He actually was sent from the hospital I birthed at to a different one. They're like the one hospital in Brisbane that all the newborn babies go to if they've got problems and stuff. All right, well, I just want to first off start by saying that me and Matt could not be happier with the outcome of everything, even though it was a saga, <laughs> a hectic time, even just our introduction to parenthood as well was crazy. We seriously could not be happier with Benjamin and we are so in love and it's like we just love him so much and we're so happy to have him here like who cares how he got here um, even though yeah it was a it was a wild ride including myself and like the care I got and everything and what happened to me as well it's just like like I remember everything but it doesn't phase me it's like he's here he's happy he's healthy now and that's all we could ask for. So I just want to put that out there. I'm not complaining at all in this video about my birth story and anything that happened. I don't want this video to come across negative in any way, but I really want to let you guys know what happened because it was crazy. <laughs> I just want to say this is why I never had a birth plan. If this, oh, excuse you. This whole birth story was to happen to anyone I'm glad it happened to me because I really did not have a plan I mean you guys know I've been saying it a lot in my videos when I was pregnant like I didn't have a birth plan I didn't want to have expectations on the day because it's so out of our control anyway I have my 40 week OB appointment on the Thursday the 3rd of September they obviously start talking to you about induction because you know it's been 40 weeks you're past your due date and you haven't had a baby yet. So she spoke to me about an induction date and she wanted to book me in for the Tuesday, the 8th, I think it was. And then she's like, well, while you're here, did you want to get um, like a cervical exam to see if you're dilated or anything? Um, and I was like, yeah, let's, let's do that. That'll be great. So um, I went to and saw a midwife down the hall and she did a cervical check. I don't know how experienced this midwife was um, because she did a cervical exam but apparently I found out later on her technique was actually really bad so she couldn't actually see if I was dilated at all or anything and I was like it's fine I'm only 40 weeks on one day like if you can't see if I'm dilated I'm, it's all good you know anyway uh, my doctor was still concerned about how big I was and how I looked I've always in my midwife appointments and everything they've always commented on how like big I looked and like his size and everything so she wanted me to have a scan the next day the Friday come in at 4 p.m. and get a scan and they'll just measure him and see how he's going so I was like okay no worries so I came in the Friday at 4 p.m. they did the measure scan and he was measuring like 42 weeks five days or something he was measuring as like 99th percentile so that's pretty big. I went to my mum's place um, to go see them before I went home 
And while I was at my mum's, I got a phone call from the doctor that I saw um, the day before. And she said, hi Sarah, I've just looked at your um, scans and I've noticed that you've got a lot of fluid around the baby. So this is called polyhydramnios, I think I'm saying that right, but it's where there's an insane amount of fluid around the baby, like way more than there should be. And I had no idea about it, <laughs> and I don't know why they found out so late either. I think that really sucked. But she said if my waters were to break spontaneously at home, that's really dangerous because I'm at risk for cord prolapse. She's like, I highly suggest we bring forward your induction date to the weekend, like probably Saturday or Sunday. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, this is really happening. Um, I had a lot of mental breakdowns because it just really wasn't what I thought it was going to be like. Even though I didn't have any expectations, it's just, it all felt very medical all of a sudden. Um, so I had this condition that I didn't even know I had, like all pregnancy, found out literally days before I'm meant to like go into labour. She said, I highly suggest you pack your bags, go home, have a shower, have dinner. Um, and you and hubby come in tonight, come back to the hospital. So I was just there for my scan and now I'm going back um, again. So they were monitoring me and while they were monitoring me, I had um, some really strong Braxton Hicks contractions um, and they were getting pretty regular, almost like really like minor real contractions. Um, so the midwife decided to check me and I wasn't dilated at all, but I was like um, ripe or whatever they want to call it, whatever you want to call it. Like it was quite stretchy, which is a good sign. Anyway, the doctors were meant to come and see me, um, but the midwife came back and said they were stuck in an emergency cesarean, so they weren't able to see me tonight. So they admitted me right then and there. Um, woke up the next morning, got told that the doctors would come in and do their rounds on me and come see me. We ended up waiting all day that day, the Saturday, for the doctors to come see us because it was just, we had such an unfortunate time. My doctor was constantly stuck in caesarean. So yeah, every time Matt and I were like, um, are we being seen anytime soon? We'd always get told, oh yeah, soon or in an hour or they'll come at this time and they never did. We waited that whole day doing nothing. That night, Saturday night, I got told tomorrow, as in Sunday, I would be induced. Um, they would do the gel. Now the reason why they weren't going to do the balloon on me is because if they did do the balloon there's a risk that it could actually rupture my waters and they that couldn't happen because they needed my waters to be broken in like a very controlled environment because of risk of the cord coming out. So they said we won't do the balloon induction, we will do the, um, I think it's the progestion gel? Oh gosh, I think that's what it's called. Anyway, they do the gel and they can only be administered like up to three times. Um, so yeah, I got told I would get the gel and that I would get my waters broken at 6pm Sunday night. Come to Sunday morning, <laughs> again same story, got told the doctors would be in to see me soon. They didn't end up seeing me until like 10am that morning. So my doctor came in, told me everything, said I'd um, go into, said I'd basically go into labour that night. And we were like, okay, cool. So um, at 12.30 p.m., just after lunch, I got given the gel for the first time, which was a bit uncomfortable. It wasn't too painful. It was um, over and done with really fast. So I got the gel and then, um, yeah, like half an hour after I got the gel, I started having contractions and they were quite regular and they were pretty mild. Um, I was like working through them. Um, so mind you, I'm still in this private room. I haven't been moved to the birth suite yet. <laughs> I'm still in the room and yeah, me and Matt are just like chilling. We're watching TV shows and I'm just on the birth ball, like working through my contractions. Later that afternoon, they decided to strap me to the monitors and monitor Ben and myself and everything. So they did that and um, yeah, that's when they noticed my contractions actually started to ease off a bit. Um, they weren't escalating as fast as what they hoped. So they started talking to me about doing a second round of gel, which I was like, oh, really? Because <laughs> I have a feeling like as soon as I get the second round, it's going to be, yeah, more painful. After dinner, I got the second round of gel um, put in. They wanted to monitor me the whole time as well. So I had to be strapped to the bed with the monitors on me um, while I had that second round of gel and, you know, the more intense contractions. 
So needless to say, I didn't sleep that whole night. <laughs> Matt tried to get as much sleep as he could. About 11.30, 12 a.m., um, all these doctors all of a sudden just started rushing in. And I was like, me and Matt were like, what the heck is going on? And they said, all right, Sarah, we're going to move you to the birth suite now <laughs> and um, get things going. So I was like, what? And Matt was like, yeah, what's going on? And they were like, oh, Ben's heart rate. We've all been watching it. And it just got really low. Like it got to, I think it was like 107 or 110, lower than what they would have liked. So they all rushed, rushed in. I started like minor panicking. I was like, oh my gosh, what? So they put me on a wheelchair and they wheeled me off to the birth suite. We got to the birth suite, they put me on the bed and again, just same monitors and monitoring me and Ben. Um, the contractions were pretty uncomfortable at that point and being on the bed was not my best friend. Like, I wanted to be off that bed as much as I could and it was really painful. It was more painful being on the bed than like standing up. So I told them, can I just get like a birth ball or something and sit on the birth ball while you guys monitor me? And they were like, yeah, of course. So they put me on the birth ball and they were monitoring me for hours. They told me at 6 a.m., um, so this is Monday, the 7th of September, at 6 a.m. they would all come in and break my waters at 6. And I was like, okay. But I had one of the doctors come in and talk to me and she said, look, if you're not dilated, um, we can't break your waters. So she said, it's just going to be put off longer and longer or you can opt for a cesarean. And I think like that whole weekend, I was mentally preparing for a cesarean anyway. Like I feel like God was maybe like opening up my heart a bit more to the, the idea of a cesarean because I mean, I've always wanted a natural birth. Like you always think you're going to have a natural birth. But yeah, my mind, like my thought process was just sort of easing on the idea of it. And I think I was so over it at that point. Like it had been what, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three nights in hospital so far, more to come. <laughs> um, so I think I was just over it and I wanted Ben here and as safe and sound as possible. So she talked to me about the idea of it and I was like, yeah, whatever. I probably am not dilated. I didn't expect to be dilated. Um, so 6am came around and they all rushed in, they put me back on the bed, put me in stirrups, I got the gas given to me because um, when you get the gel on your cervix, everything up there becomes extremely, extremely sensitive. So I had had the gel twice now, so you can imagine it was very, very sore up there. So. Yeah, I got given the gas to breathe through it while she was up there. And um, yeah, that was the most, that was pretty intense experience. She checked me, I ended up being two centimeters dilated. It was enough space to actually break my waters. So she broke my waters and she had like, she like kept her fingers in there because she was trying to stop the cord from coming out. So again, very controlled way of breaking the water. Um, but once the waters had come out and the cord wasn't there, she just like let everything come out. And I'm telling you, uh, there was so much waters like that came out. Um, yeah, because of my condition, the polyhydromnius um, excess fluid, there was so much. So I just sat there for a bit while it all just came out. And I'm telling you, the relief I felt around my belly, my belly was rock hard. It started feeling softer and I could breathe better. It was so nice when my waters broke. Um, and then they told me to get up, so like more came out and oh my gosh, I stood up and there was a big gush. It was it was so intense, so intense. I told Matt to like take photos, so I have like photos of the water. Okay, at 6.30 a.m. they started the oxytocin drip. And they started me on um, number one. That was like pretty good. I was doing well. Um, then they went to two and then they went to four. And when they got to four, um, my uterus actually was contracting, contracting um, quite intensely. Like I was having back-to-back -back ones. They were kind of like overlapping. So they gave me like an injection on my arm that sort of um, helped my uterus to relax a bit more. I ended up laboring naturally for 10 hours. They checked me at I think around 10, 30, 11 a.m. And I was four centimeters dilated, which I was really happy to hear. I was like, okay, I can, I can work with that. Um, so yeah, during that time, I used the shower. I mean, I had the monitors on me. 
um, but I was able to like use a shower, I used my TENS machine that I hired, I loved the gas, it was amazing, and the birth ball was incredible too. So I tried to utilise as much as I could. They offered me to have the clip inserted, um, which they clip onto the baby's head to get more of a accurate reading of his heart. Um, so I actually opted for that because it was a lot more mobile. So they're just like, it sounds really rough and I was really concerned when we were making the decision about it. But it's actually, it was, it was totally fine. They just clipped it onto his head, doesn't even have a neck now, like nothing. And then they like tape it to your leg. So I was able to move around a lot more freer. And then it got to around midday or 1pm and they decided to boost me up. The doctors were all outside watching everything going down and they were like, nope, we need her to start dilating quicker, so let's boost her up. Because I think it's like a certain amount of hours they have to boost you up on the oxytocin, so they boosted me up to a level eight, and that was my limit. <laughs> an eight, a four to an eight was the world of a difference. I felt like I was doing really well on a four. Like, I was coping. Don't get me wrong, they were very painful, but I was coping. But an eight just sent me. <laughs> Oh, just put them down. Anyway, so yeah, an eight was definitely uh, my limit, and I don't even know how long I was on the eight. It must have been for a couple of hours, but I couldn't do it anymore. And that's when I literally looked at Matt and I was like, I cannot do this. I need the epidural. And I looked at my midwives and I was like, get me the epidural. So um, they were like, okay, no worries. We'll get you that epidural. So um, the anesthesiologist ended up being free and she came in 15 minutes, which was amazing. Um, and yeah, we got that sucker in me and <laughs> it was the greatest thing. So hard to stay still when you're contracting and they're trying to like numb you and like put the needle in. And So I didn't even feel that thing at all. I don't, I remember her being like, okay, we're all done, good job. Like I was like, what, <laughs> you're finished? So I got the epidural, I think it was around like 3.30 p.m. or something um, that afternoon. At 5 p.m. the doctor came in and he started talking to me about a cesarean. And the reason for that was because they've been watching Ben's heart rate that whole time I was in labor and there was no good baseline. Like his heart rate was going everywhere because he was obviously getting really stressed in the uterus from it contracting so much from the um, oxytocin. So he got to about like, I think it was like 170 and they were like, yeah, no, this is not good. There's no good baseline. He's stressing out a lot. Um, I've also got the polyhydromnius, which they're keeping in mind, and then he's also apparently a big baby as well, so I had all these risks. And he's like, look, I'm going to come back in an hour at 6pm and see how you're progressing on the epidural, um, but he's like, if you're not progressing as quick as what you want, we want you to be, um, we're going to have to do an emergency cesarean. And I was like, look, whatever. <laughs> So he came back at 6 p.m. and he checked my cervix and I was six centimeters. So I wasn't progressing too, too much and they, yeah, were not liking how Ben was, how Ben was going. So, um, yeah, we had to have an emergency cesarean. Yeah, they wheeled me off to theater and at 7.34 p.m. he was born. As soon as they raised Ben up over the curtain and he was crying, oh my gosh, the amount of love and emotion and I was just so overwhelmed just seeing his face and then I had a split second right at the end where I was like who is this gigantic baby <laughs> so I was laying there and Matt went off with him he cut the cord and he came back to me he's like babe and I'm like what he's 10 pounds in one ounce. I was just shocked. So Ben was born at 10 pounds and one ounce um, or 4.59 kilos, like just under 4.6 kilos. But he wasn't just big, he was long. He was just under 60 centimeters long. I just, I couldn't believe it. That was insane. They were estimating Ben would be like nine one, like nine pound one. Um, so for him to be a whole kilo, like, heavier, was just wild to me, so, but it explains so much. <laughs> I mean, I was huge. <laughs> you guys all saw me, I was massive. I had cuddles with him for only a couple of minutes, 
and then they had to take him. I got told he would need to be taken away anyway because he was estimating to be a big boy. And that's what they usually do, just to check the baby's all good. So they took him to special care nursery um, at the hospital I birthed at. And they noticed his uh, breathing was actually really fast. Um, and I actually noticed it a little bit when he was like put on me. So they helped him with his breathing. Um, he had like a breathing um, mask on him and everything. And then they noticed he was um, sweating a lot as well and looked a little bit pale. So they, de they decided to check his blood sugar levels. And that's when they noticed that, yeah, they were very low. They were on the low side. Um, which again is like normal for big babies. But then I got told that he was actually going to be sent to a, another hospital. So they were monitoring him um, that whole night, that Monday night. And I got sent back to the ward, um, which was honestly the craziest feeling like just feeling cut up coming out of like you know surgery sent to the ward and I've got no baby <laughs> that was yeah that first time I, like, I didn't sleep again and that was really hard to deal with as well just like feeling left without a baby especially when you got like other women around you that have their babies and you don't so that was really hard Throughout the night I had the um, someone from the nursery constantly updating me and I had nurses, I had midwives coming, taking colostrum from me and sending it down to Ben. But yeah, I got told that he would be sent in the morning, Tuesday morning, to the Mata Mother's Hospital. While he was there, me and Matt like, came home, you know, slept at home. The next morning would wake up, go straight into the city, go spend the whole day with Ben, come home, sleep, go next day, go back. Like, that was our life. We were just going in and out to see Ben, to see our baby. Um, yeah, it was so hard coming home with Matt, um, just without our baby. Me and Matt's main prayer was that he would not have any long-term medical issues, which he doesn't, which is amazing. So we're so thankful for that. Um, but yeah, it was a really, really rough start to parenthood. So that is my birth story. It was a wild ride. Um, we look back at it and we do see God's hand on so much of it. Honestly, so much could have gone wrong um, and it didn't. Yes, it was really hard and a lot of things we didn't expect. Um, a lot of things that still did suck that happened, but um, you can always choose to look at the negative or the positive and we chose to look at the positives of everything. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for listening to my birth story. We're so happy he's here and he's healthy. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Stay up to date with our life with Benny. I'm not sure when I'm going to get like any new videos out. Every day is going to be different so I'll see how I go. <laughs> But for now, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Say bye, Benny. Bye, Bubby. Oh, bye-bye. Bye-bye.